I'm standing next to VersaBracket version 2.0. I'm excited to tell you all about it, but that's not even the most exciting thing going on today. Have a patent pending prototype right here. I'm gonna tell you all about it in just a little bit. Welcome back everybody. Today we're gonna to talk about ballast weight for your tractor. Yeah, it's an important topic. That's why I'm focusing on it, on the products that I'm developing, but there's a lot of other options you can use as well. And in fact, you're probably gonna find yourself using a combination of multiple options that you either have on hand or need to buy or put together when you're buying your tractor. So we've got 10 ways to ballast your tractor today. We'll tell you briefly why ballast weight is important, why you should consider it, and tell you more about that new product that we have coming as well. So if you do enjoy today's video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit that subscribe button to see more tractor videos. And if you want something for your tractor, guess what? We sell tractor attachments. We ship them all over the country. Visit goodworkstractors.com. All right, so a little update here on the Versa bracket. We've gone to version 2.0 now. Well, we will be really soon, all right? This is the first one, the first look at it. But what we've done, we've switched to tube steel down here. So we did have angle iron to begin with, but we've now uh, put an entire tube down there just to help with the strength, the rigidity, uh, and just product improvement, right? That's what we do. The next change that we made are gonna be switching over to threaded pins. And we did this for a couple of reasons, just to get to a more standardized setup on there versus the welded pins that we previously had. The second benefit is for shipping. So you can buy this as part of a bundle with a bunch of suitcase weights. We put it in a crate and ship it out to you LTL, which is what most folks are doing. But if you already have suitcase weights, and you just wanna have the bracket shipped to you, we're gonna send this UPS ground. And so with these pins hanging out when they were welded down, it's just a, a point of potential damage. And so now with the threaded on version, we can slide these right inside the receiver tube, just slap some tape on either end to keep it in there before we uh, start packing everything up. And you can actually see a little bit of tape that's left over on here, but that's how we're gonna set them to you and then just thread them on when you get it. And you're still gonna have the same great features as version 1.0, okay? So it's called the Versa Bracket for a reason. It can do more than one thing. So the main functionality is gonna be to hold suitcase weights. You can put eight suitcase weights, whether they're 41 or 70 pounds on here, but you have some other features too. So you have a two inch receiver right here. You have a couple of chain hooks right here. And lastly, you're gonna have a chainsaw holder up top that can slide down, fit a 20 inch bar and fit right behind your suitcase weights. And most importantly, it is made in the USA, USA steel, USA labor. Okay, so now let's go really quickly through a whole slew of other ballast weight options for you to consider. And I wanna emphasize just how important ballast weight is, why I make such a big deal about it. You know, I have fortunately never had a complete disaster, but I've had my fair share of close calls over the year, and it's normally because I don't have enough ballast weight on the backside. In fact, even recently, we were testing out an LS tractor, a 40 horsepower tractor, just playing around with it, lifting up some buckets of dirt with a front end loader. It had a uh, a backhoe on the backside of it, but that was it. There was no loaded tires, no wheel weights, and I wasn't in a dangerous situation, but it was enough for me to notice when that bucket was full of dirt that the back end was starting to lose constant traction or constant grip with the ground, those tires were. It was getting a little bit light, and as I was driving around and moving back and forth, I could feel that little bit of a bounce, which means you're on the verge of being unstable. So John Deere is very good about putting ballast weight requirements in their manuals, okay? So if you look in a loader manual, it's gonna tell you exactly what you need to have your minimum ballast weight requirements. And so even if you don't have a John Deere tractor, say you have a Kubota, Coyote, an LS, Mahindra, whatever it is, find something that's similar in the John Deere world and you can still reference those manuals online and get an idea of what your minimum ballast weight requirement is. And typically that will include multiple forms of ballast weight, something on the wheels, something inside the tires, something on the three point hitch. So you have to have multiple forms typically to get to that minimum requirement. Okay, so I'm gonna rattle these off pretty quickly, but if you wanna know the cheapest form of ballast weight, I did a video all about that a couple years ago on a cost per pound basis. Now there's other considerations besides just cost to look at, but if you wanna know dollar for dollar where your best value is, check that out. All right, so high up there on the list is of course a ballast box, all right? and so. The one that I typically recommend for folks is gonna be from Titan or palletforks.com. We'll put a link to it, but it's more than just a ballast box. It's gonna have a built-in two inch receiver. It's got a trap door, so if you use gravel or sand, you can just open that trap door and empty it out a lot easier that way. I think it has built-in fork slots. They are quick hitch compatible too. So check that one out. It's a pretty cheap option on a cost per pound basis. Now liquid ballast is something that I use in every tractor that I keep personally. Well, except for my new 1025er that we just got here. I, I have not done it yet, but I will be doing so. But I think it's such a valuable amount of weight to have just kind of hidden right inside your tires. You don't have to worry about it. You do get some concerns or some questions about, is it gonna impact uh, when I'm mowing my lawn or driving over my lawn? And yeah, it's gonna add some weight as far as that goes, but that weight is spread out across 
the surface, the contact surface of your tire. So it's gonna increase the PSI, but not a whole lot. But for me, that built-in benefit of having that weight that's just hidden there, not taking up any other real estate is pretty beneficial. So I don't sell liquid ballast. I don't really know where you can buy it online. I don't know if it's cost-effective to do so. We use a local tire shop, an industrial tire shop over in Madawan called Meekoff Tire. They just got done loading our new Kubota M4 tractor and they put about 1,700 pounds of liquid ballast in the rear tires. That's a lot of weight, but it is a big tractor. Okay, so kind of sticking with the wheels and tires, wheel weights are a really good option. You know, on my 4720, previously the 4066R, not only did we have liquid ballast inside the tires, but we had a triple stack of wheel weights that are right inside those wheels as well. So you have about 600 pounds of ballast weight right there. Again, this is all weight that's on the rear axle, helping keep your back end planted to the ground. So when you have a, a heavy load with that front end loader, right, whether it's in your bucket, on a set of pallet forks, holding it in a grapple, whatever the case is, you want those rear tires planted to the ground for safety and for efficiency. So on those larger tractors like your John Deere 3R and your 4R, similar Kubotas, you can put on triple stacks of wheel weights. Some of the smaller tractors, you can only put a single stack or a double stack, but I would encourage you to look into it. It's a great option to consider because that three point weight alone typically is not enough. Next up is a quick hitch, believe it or not. And so I point this one out because it's more than just a hunk of steel. It's gonna serve another purpose besides adding about 70 pounds of ballast weight back here, which is pretty valuable. But this is also going to serve as a quick attach system or a quick connect system for three point attachments. So as long as they are category one and quick hitch compatible, you can leave this Spico quick hitch right on the back of your three point all the time. And if you have, let's say you do have a ballast box and you have a box blade and you have a rototiller and a brush hog or whatever else it might be, it's gonna take about 90%, that's my estimate, of the pain out of that process on connecting to those attachments. The great thing about the Spico is that it does not use bushings in any of these lower hooks. So most other quick hitches that are on the market require you to upsize the pins to a category three by buying a set of adapters or bushings to put on there, which can, I've seen them run over $50 a set now. So the savings add up quickly with the Spico. We wrap these things up really well with corner guard, shrink wrap, stretch wrap, ship them UPS ground right to you, buy them on the website. Okay, so a few other options for you that are gonna have that kind of multi-purpose, kind of like the Spico quick hitch would have. Uh, number one, a cab, right? So that's gonna add a lot of additional weight right over the rear axle, which is beneficial, but it's also gonna keep you protected from the elements, the sun, um, the rain, the snow, the heat, the cold, and so on, even the dust and the bugs. So you can see it has a lot of benefits there. One of the downsides with a cab is that it is gonna typically raise your center of gravity, but that's where this next one helps out. And so with wheel spacers or a dual wheel setup, depending on your tractor, what you have going on, you know, those can add additional weight, again, on the rear axle helping you out. And they can also add stability because they're gonna widen your footprint. Tractors are typically fairly long and skinny, okay? And so they're a little tippy side to side. So if you have a lot of uneven terrain, a lot of hills that you have to navigate, you could look into this and try to find additional ways to justify those spacers or the dual wheels and tires and more easily justify that cost. Another really good option, of course, is gonna be any other three-point attachment that you might have. Now, some of these are gonna be better suited than others. Having a brush hog on the back if you are navigating in even semi-tight quarters can be a real pain because those are gonna extend out six, seven, eight foot behind the tractor and have a tendency to wanna to kind of sway and rock the machine if you're moving around a lot. However, other attachments like a box blade, for example, we did this back in the spring. Um, on the sides of the box blade, you can actually hang suitcase weights right on there. So you can have the box blade on the back, which is just a big hunk of steel, right? No moving parts. If you accidentally backed into something, it's not gonna, well, it's less likely to damage the attachment. And then you can also hang on those suitcase weights on there too and add to your ballast weight. Another interesting option is gonna be a tank sprayer. So we have a 55 gallon tank sprayer and hypothetically, you could fill that full of water in the winter time, that could be problematic and you really wanna fill it completely. You don't want there to be room for that water to slosh around back and forth because that's gonna make it more of an uncomfortable ride for you as the operator and potentially have swings momentum that could be dangerous depending on your terrain. And so a couple options on the front side of the tractor that you might wanna consider depending on your tractor that you have in your application. Let's say you're brush hogging your field or rototilling and you have a big old heavy attachment on the back side of it. You wanna have something on the front side to offset that or counter that weight. And you need to be able to maintain your steering, which is gonna be done with your front tires and your front axle. So you wanna keep some weight up there to keep that down. And you can do that in a couple of different ways. Maybe the easiest way, as long as space allows, is just to keep your front end loader on with a bucket there and fill it up with a scoop of dirt. That's gonna give you plenty of weight up front and keep those front tires firmly on the ground so that as you're kind of going through the field or wherever you're navigating, you're gonna avoid that bouncy feeling and loss of traction. 
And another option, whether you had the loader on or off, depending on the tractor, would be to hang suitcase weights right on the front rail of the machine. You can put, I know on the 1025R, five 41 pound suitcase weights right on there, even with the front end loader on. So that's gonna be an additional 200 pounds that you have of weight right up front, helping you maintain your steering ability. All right, and now the prototype, which still you have to make a few tweaks, but it's ready to show you what the general premise is. And what this is, is a weight bracket that fits over the corner of a quick hitch, all right? Just like the Speco. And what you do, you can put a bolt right through underneath. And this is the part we're still kind of, whoops, finalizing the, uh, the dimensions and the tolerances and all that kind of thing too. And so the premise is, is that this is gonna fit right in the corner. It's not gonna interfere, which again, we're working on a couple, you can see right here, it's hitting that, that bracket. We're gonna lower this down a little bit. We're gonna make it all work and get and get worked out there, but that's part of the prototype process is kind of getting your initial concept there, making some tweaks based on that. But you're gonna be able to hang three suitcase weights, all right? So 41 or 70 pound suitcase weights on both sides of the quick hitch there. So again, the idea behind this and, and why I wanted to do this is because of the fact that oftentimes you wanna have ballast weight on there or maybe you need more ballast weight but you don't wanna tie up your three point hitch, right? Say you have a landscape rake or a rear blade or maybe even a small box blade, some other fairly light attachment on the back and you just need more ballast weight. So now you have the ability to have a three point attachment on here and then have the additional ballast weight when you need it. And so again, this is just a prototype. Got a few tweaks and modifications to make. If you uh, know of something that we should do or maybe incorporate, we want to keep the cost down, right? It's always that fine line of, of uh, managing everything, right? The features, the quality, the price point. You got to make it affordable to be a shipped product to get delivered right to you. But we're really excited to get this to market. All right, so a couple examples here you can see. If you had 41 pound weights, the total amount between six suitcase weights, the brackets and the quick hitch is about 320 pounds of ballast weight and you still have your three point hitch available. Now, if you bump that up to the 70 pound weights between six 70 pound weights, the two brackets and the quick hitch, you're gonna have about 500 pounds of ballast weight. Again, three point hitch still available. And so again, you know, this is a sneak peek, right? This is a prototype. We gotta tighten up some tolerances here, make a few changes here and there, but that load is on this bolt underneath here. So there's no, there's no load that's on this bracket. It's free and loose right there, but we want this to be snug. You know, one of the, well, I should say, most quick hitches are, are the same square tubing. So the dimensions should be pretty similar. The gussets are gonna be something that is a variable. We're trying to figure that out. Well, we wanna make it universal so that we just have to produce one model, one variation. So that could be multiple holes that are in this bracket. Maybe we need to send a few out to a few other folks and just get their feedback on it too. I don't know, time will tell, but either way, we're pretty excited. All right, well, that's gonna wrap it up for today. So again, most of everything we talked about, not the calves, not the liquid ballast, but I think just about everything else on the list, you can find at goodworkstractors.com. Again, this whole video is about operator safety for you tractor owners out there, so don't take it lightly. I got, I didn't even get a laugh here. Is it, nobody thinks that's funny? Okay, I'm, I'm too quick, I'm too quick. But seriously, you do not want to find out after it's too late, right? When your rear tires are up in the air or one tire, or your tractor slipped over or it's rolled over, whatever it is, it's no coulda, woulda, shouldas at that point. You need to have this done ahead of time. It's one of the few requirements that I say is blanket coverage for every tractor owner. So again, if you did enjoy the video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit subscribe to see more tractor videos. And if you want something for your tractor, you know where to go, goodworkstractors.com. Thanks for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe with ballast weight, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>